welcome back to the Fandom Family Chats. I'm Maureen, and we are here with our host, Nat, Eve. Hi, guys. Hi. <laughs> <laughs> and today we are talking about the This Is Us season finale. I don't know about you guys, but this uh, the season finale got me a whole lot of different emotional roller coasters. Yes. They were not all good. No, I'm not. I'm unwell. <laughs> no, I'm still very upset. <laughs> I wonder if we are alone in that. I don't think we are. Although, I don't know. I mean, I've seen more people okay with it than I expected to be okay with it. Yeah. Like, I really thought everybody would be as upset as I am, but they're not. So. Maybe there's something wrong with us. I don't Maybe. know. But Maybe. It was, very I don't know. it was very upsetting. <sighs> I didn't like it. No. I mean, like the whole I mean, episode that, or just the end? No, like just that one, like the, that that those two minutes at the end. Okay. Yeah. Well, let's yeah. let's start from the beginning because okay. we are going to have an awful lot to say about that ending because I I have things I have things and things and things to say. So remind me how it started. I forget how it even opened up. Oh, I haven't watched it since the night of, so I'm trying to remember. Um, uh, I mean, I think we was the first things we were seeing. I mean, Kevin and Nikki like recording, like they were getting ready to so, go right. Oh yeah, with Nikki recording everything. That was hysterical. Yes. I know I said this on our Twitter feed, but Nikki and Miguel are my new favorite couple on This Is Us. They're so funny. I have to admit, Nikki and Baby Mad a couple of weeks in a row, but this week I loved him again. So I, I was fine with it. It's all is forgiven now. Yes. <laughs> One scene where he and Miguel were in the background and he says, <laughs> Nikki says, I'm like, can't you just go get this? And Miguel says, I've been paying people to do this for the last 20 years. <laughs> yes. <laughs> oh, I wish I could remember. There was like a comeback in Miguel's too that even Kevin said, Miguel, be nice to my Uncle Nikki. But I can't remember what exactly he said. It was about it was about it. a show or something. Because right. Kevin was like, Uncle oh, Nikki, <laughs> it's this. <laughs> yeah it's, that's it's, right it's, uncle nikki it's this and i think you'd really like it yeah miguel would be nice to my uncle yeah <laughs> he, was, he, he threw a movie reference at him and nikki was like what the hell is that because <laughs> yeah, no you know, he's, he's nikki and he probably doesn't watch a lot of movies no no <laughs> and then he does the, puzzles right? exactly. that's... <laughs> and then when the wedding planner came out and she was like so we have a problem and nikki's recording and kevin's like do you have to do that right now yeah yeah, you need it for memories. <laughs> like, this is a big moment. <laughs> he was like, that's just the whole episode. Nikki was like the one redeeming thing about that whole episode. I just yep. I loved him so much. <laughs> Which I actually had a thought about what Nikki, about Nikki recording the whole day. I wonder if maybe Kevin will watch that and it will somehow make him realize how much he does love Madison because I maybe. still have hope for them. Mm-hmm. Because there had to be, I don't know, I just feel like there's got to be some significance to him recording all of that stuff. And yeah, I don't know. We'll see. I think it's more than just like an old person who just figured out how to record. <laughs> Probably. But I'm trying to, I'm yeah, trying to find any. I, no, I mean, there has hope. to be was, something more than that. Okay. Yeah. 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 I, mean, I was I, pretty impressed that he figured out how to record anything. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I mean, like, oh, Nikki. <laughs> Nikki's holding a video camera. This is really interesting. Right. <laughs> And it was then what it was, which is pretty high tech. Yeah. But and then what was the the other one of the other parts kind of in the beginning of it was Rebecca when we flash back to you know her being so it we're getting ready to watch her dynasty and just mm -hmm. laying everything out. Oh. And it was just so funny because she gets so mad when she finds out it's been taped over. And I mean I feel like all, all of us can relate to this because how many times do we not get to watch stuff because our kids are constantly like yeah pulling us in every direction and like here she is I feel like this is me like when I sit down for the finale of you know this is us like everyone be quiet I'm ready to watch my show now you yeah. know yeah I think I was live tweeting that night for this is us and we started it like five minutes later, something. And so when she, when the very first scene I see of everybody is the little three, the big three coming up to bed going, are you guys going to get a divorce? And I was like, wow, that's a fun way to wake up because I thought that was the beginning of it. I didn't, I it didn't. It was some really other stuff. No, it's because he it recorded over her dynasty wedding with baseball. She was unhappy. I have to say that was a really creepy scene though, with all of them just standing there staring at them <laughs> like, first thing in the morning. And she was like, Babe, see that, babe, 
they're yeah. all awake and they're looking at us <laughs> like children of the corn <laughs> and, and and that happens because i've had mine hovering over my bed and like scaring me to death like oh my god what do you need yeah so. i woke up at 4 30 once it was the first day of summer vacation and my daughter just got out of preschool and she was just standing there in front of my face staring at me like inches from my face i was like what what yeah. are you doing <laughs> is it time to wake up now no kids can be creepy sometimes yeah. <laughs> but I thought that was I thought really cute. Really cool. They did the did the fake wedding for them. Yes, <laughs> really I loved it. Sweet. With little Kate officiating, it was it was really cute. The one thing I wish that they did differently is that, and I get that they were little and they thought the fighting meant divorce, but I wish they would have more normalized it. Like, yeah, it's yeah. Not, we call each other names. It's not going to do this, but you know, it's okay that we fight. It, it's all yeah. right. Yeah. yeah, they kind of just were glazed over. It's like, oh, we were just having a really silly conversation yeah. about, you know, the TV. I'm like, no, it was an argument, mm-hmm. and they need to yeah. know that. Yeah, and and I, I feel like they, they were big. And en- go ahead, go ahead. I was just gonna, and I feel like they're big enough. I mean, like you could explain that to them. It's not like yeah. they were like two. I mean, what are they probably now? Probably like you know four. I mean, I don't know. I'm trying to guess if they look like they're about four. That's what I, I would guessing. say, like kindergarten yeah. age, because I mean, they knew about divorce, they knew about that sort of yeah. thing. We're talking well, so I'd say like kindergarten. Yeah, because I'm not even sure Shelby knows what my da- my daughter. I'm not sure that she knows what a divorce is. You know, I mean, yeah. like I don't know. And they would have had to. They probably would have heard that from one of their classmates. Probably. So yeah, I agree. I wish they would have just you know, because couples fight sometimes, you know. And then it kind of set them up for even Kevin for this idealized version of what marriage should be. Mm-hmm. And yeah their parents fought throughout the years as they got older and they had arguments but even then it was like they tried to hide it from their kids yeah when they were like in high school junior high they tried to hide that they were fighting or hide that they weren't getting along and mm-hmm. they always made some sort of excuse so i think i think if they would have been more open about the fact that it's okay for marriage married people to disagree it's okay for them to argue it's a, you mm-hmm. shouldn't do it in front of them. it's not like your goal should be to do it in front of the kids so you normalize it it's not like you should have screaming matches but you're two different people with two different opinions and that's going to happen and i think that yeah. it kind of really messed with kevin and where he kind of because he idolized that marriage he idolized that relationship and that was clear by how they kept flashing back to it the whole episode mm-hmm. that he just he i think he felt that he needed to have that same kind of spark yeah and that same kind of whatever yeah the fairy yeah. tale you know that he thinks and what's i mean rebecca and jack aren't a fairy tale but you know the kids don't know that because they never saw that side of them exactly yeah yeah and unfortunately with jack dying so young they never really got to like see their parents together yeah. like view them as adults like mm-hmm. you know i see my parents interact as adults and they're a little more open about arguing in front of us mm-hmm. yeah as yeah. adults because we can handle and the, the big three never really got to see that yeah and i think that i, I think that they were frozen in time then right mm-hmm. frozen exactly yeah. as it was and it can never be anything other than that and even when jack died seeing how broken and grief stricken rebecca was i think that they almost associated that more with how great their marriage was how amazing their father was how idyllic and fairy tale like their wedding and their marriage was rather than i love this person and i'm sad he's gone yeah yeah I thought Randall through the episode was pretty funny too. <laughs> yes. <laughs> when he was singing to himself. <laughs> I love Randall. <laughs> he, I, well, uh, well, and he while. was following Kevin around with that um, <laughs> with that parasol. Or something. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, what Although- is he? doing but he was right because kevin went in the bathroom and realized that he was getting a little red so yeah, i mean no, randall I was trying to help out on. <laughs> <laughs> but that's when nikki and miguel were arguing toby was being weird with the flowers <laughs> and then <laughs> randall was falling with the umbrella and the way kevin just slowly slow turned and looked at each one of them and went i need to get air you're outside i need inside air <laughs> <laughs> yeah oh <laughs> what a what a group (laughs) but then when he was like when he was trying to avoid the conversation with his mom and i thought rebecca was really good about telling him you know i need you to have these conversations with me and i was i was kind of i was a little mad at first when they had that conversation and she started crying and he ended it because rebecca was right i'm going to cry but that's okay and randall is so it's and i don't think that was pushed on them i think that's what he felt he had to do rather than what anybody expected of him because i mean mm-hmm. that's just that's who randall is he always has high expectations he always felt like he had to 
be better and greater and have more than anyone because he was the odd man out in that family. Yeah. So I think that that's where that comes from, but I'm glad Rebecca forced him to talk about it more saying, you know, I'm going to cry, but it doesn't mean I'm crying about what you think I am. I need you to tell me this stuff. You need to be able to tell me this stuff. I'm your mother. And I love yeah. when she said she was your mother and he went, she was my biological. Like, I loved that too. Oh, thank you, Randall, for affirming that in her because I've been mad at him for a while. Yeah. I, it just kind of seemed like, I, 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 it seemed like he was almost mad at Rebecca and that's his own fault that he couldn't share stuff with her. Yeah. I mean, Rebecca enabled it, I mean, but she didn't push yeah. it. But Randall's the one who decided to back off on everything. Yeah. I think he was still, I mean, I guess, I don't know. I, I think he's just still harboring the fact that she kept all of it from him, which, yeah. you know, she admits now that she shouldn't have. And, mm-hmm. you know, but, you know, yeah, you make decisions at the time you think it's best for your kids. And sometimes we're wrong. And I think that's just what happened there. So, mm-hmm. yeah. And I think that conversation with Kevin really helped Randall out too, because I'm glad that one, I'm glad Rebecca finally said what she had to say to Randall and Mm -hmm. really truly asking forgiveness for it. Because I think Randall was just like, all right, I'm just going to shove it aside and we're going to move past it. Yeah. But that conversation had to happen where Rebecca owned up to it, apologized and asked him to forgive her for it. I think that had to happen a long time ago. So I'm glad she finally gave him that ability and that space to do that. But Mm -hmm. I also think that Kevin's conversation with him the week prior where he um, I think Randall said something along the lines of, it sounds like you think I'm saying I'm not grateful or that I, I didn't love it, love my family or whatever. And Kevin's like, that is what you're saying. And I'm glad that yeah. Kevin said that too, because that's what I had been feeling for a while. Yeah. That Randall's just like, you know what? You guys don't understand me because I'm black and you're white. So, you know, whatever. And that it's just, it's felt like that for a while. Yeah. Anyway. Yeah, I think so. I mean, I guess I've seen both sides of it, you know, throughout the whole thing. Like, I mean, I can't, you know, I'm, I don't know what he's going through, but I agree that it was becoming like he wasn't grateful for his own family. And so mm-hmm. I agree. Now, did you all think it was okay? I saw like on our Facebook group, like a lot of people were really upset that Rebecca forced that conversation at the wedding, but I didn't have a problem with that. No, because Randall wasn't good. She knows her son. <laughs> Yeah. What else was I Randall going to give her any, even, at, even at the wedding, he was trying to avoid her. And he even told Kevin flat out, I don't yeah. want to have this conversation with mom. So I'm going to do everything I can for you. Yeah. I didn't have an issue with it. Cause it's not like, I mean, had it been Randall's wedding day, maybe it yeah, wouldn't have been exactly. the time and the place, but it wasn't. So I didn't have a problem with the time and the place at all. No. Yeah. I didn't think it seemed off at all to me in fact it got randall out of kevin's hair for a little bit so i think he <laughs> sort of appreciated that yeah it's much yeah. more of a benefit <laughs> i think too that yeah. i mean it's not like randall was avoiding the conversation because he wanted the day to be about kevin that's not why he was avoiding the conversation exactly so not a problem with it <laughs> yeah he was just trying to avoid it all together yeah <laughs> he was just using the wedding as an excuse to exactly avoid it and i don't think kevin wanted him to avoid it so no i think kevin is i think kevin is on board with randall wanting to get all this out in the open because i think the randall's biggest problem is that when he has a problem he denies Mm -hmm. when he has a problem he hides it and he shoves it down and that causes emotional breakdowns and it causes incredibly painful things and it colors how he views everything that happens in his family so I think that Kevin is starting to understand that a little bit more as he talks through the stuff that he had suffered as a kid. And I, because it was yeah. a complete shock. And I think Kevin is kind of like, well, well, we never knew. We, and that's, I mean, you can't expect a kid to be that eloquent with describing that kind of pain and that kind of whatever. But I think Kevin is starting to understand now that Randall does hide everything that's hard for him. Yeah. And I think Kevin would have encouraged him to get it out because he had to get it out. I mean, the Pearsons are great at emoting. So the fact that Rand is all in is. Yeah. That's, that's I true. mean, we saw that a lot in this episode with how they just glazed over the dynasty fight. Yeah, exactly. They did. Yeah. I mean, I think they all kind of tend to do that. I mean, she had a right to be mad. She has three you know young kids at home yep. and she wanted to watch her show and he taped over it yeah. and she wrote on it very largely do not tape over <laughs> like how, maybe, how did he miss that like i'm really confused about it's probably late why. at night he just grabbed a tape i mean i remember 
it made me have a flashback like I can almost remember like my mom used to watch yeah. General Hospital and um she like record it would record it during the day you know because that's how you did it there's no DVR or anything like that and I think it got recorded over a couple of times and I remember her being upset like it maybe it was like a big episode or something and I mean it was a big deal you know yeah. she wanted to watch her show mm-hmm. you know it's back in the day when you can't just pick it up on Hulu whenever you're ready you know like <laughs> so yeah. I think all of us 90s kids had that problem. <laughs> we understand, yeah. 90s, 80s kids, we all had it. <laughs> right, right. My parents are a little more open about their fighting, but <laughs> that's okay. Mine were as well. Maybe a little too open at times, but you know. <laughs> <laughs> How do you think that conversation went? Do you think enough was said there? Um, right I feel there. like it was, I feel like it was a good start, but I don't feel feel like they dug deep enough like I don't think that conversation is finished yeah yeah I'd agree and I think maybe a conversation like that is one of those that just needs to just stay open and you just continue communicating about it so Mm -hmm. and maybe that was the benefit of having it then was that Rebecca could make him see that look this isn't going to kill me it's not going to break me I don't you can't Mm -hmm. be concerned about that let's let's talk more when we are able to but let's open the door so it stays open now yeah i'm having a hard time remember what else he told her past showing her the two pictures i am too it's awful <laughs> like i said i watched it I'm the day of and i'm so i can't I remember meant, a lot of the details i meant to rewatch it today so i could be prepared and then i got caught up in everything else in my dvr so <laughs> i never got around to it <laughs> now what do, what do we think about tess in this episode i feel i mean i know a lot of people are really upset about the whole dress situation i was not um yeah a lot of people were really uh, like yeah. were, were you know really giving it to her in um in the group i think mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. i didn't get like i didn't see it like everyone else seems to have seen it no. i mean i, I thought mean, yeah my sorry, initial thought I was, just, I was gonna say my initial thought was okay girl nobody likes a bridesmaid's dress just suck it up and wear it but at the same time I mean Kevin loves Tess mm-hmm. I think Kevin and I mean I think Madison is just a chill kind of person so I I don't think they would have a problem with her all and I think dress. Beth and I think Beth knew that like she yeah. knew they'd be okay with it. and it's more than that it's about a girl who's learning a lot mm-hmm. about herself and she's legitimately uncomfortable yeah wearing a dress yeah she's not I uncomfortable she... wearing a dress because she ended up in a dress and she said it was perfect or yeah they i guess that's the part confused yeah i guess that part kind of confused me a tiny bit but i mean I still think she... i didn't think yeah. she deserved that much flack for you know i mean honestly in the dress tess gets a lot of like black on the social media pages which i don't i don't get because i'm like she's a 13 year old girl who has she's all the, the 13 year old girl motions that the rest of us have on top of trying to understand her sexuality yeah 13 year old girls are hard. not very nice to their mothers like i i don't think my sister and i were very nice to our mother when we were 13 years old no i wasn't either you know i mean i don't know i just I give her a pass. I'm like, she's, you know, granted, some, I, mean, I don't give her a pass fully. I think Beth handles it perfectly because I think mm-hmm. Beth, you know, when she needs to be like, okay, that's too much, she'll put her foot down. I don't but think she in this will situation, with Tess right now, what is it? I don't think she will with Tess right now. Um, well, I don't she know. hasn't I mean, been. The, the day that she had, um, her, when the girl was in her room, um, I mean, she did, I think, because she told her, you know, like, this is it the rules are the same no matter what you know so I mean I think in that moment she kind of put her foot down where she didn't walk on eggshells so I think when it's necessary she will I I like that she did stand up there but then she went right back to to let and test do what she wanted to do because she is giving her a pass because of all the difficulties she's undergoing yeah okay, so. I, mm. I did think Beth handled this particular situation well though my issue wasn't even that the dress was changed. It wasn't that she didn't like it. My issue was that she punished everybody in the room because she didn't like wearing this particular dress. It wasn't even that she didn't like wearing a dress. It was that she didn't like this particular dress. Mm-hmm. 
I think if she would have been like, well, I I'm super uncomfortable in, in a dress. I don't want to show this part. But, but she ended up in a dress still. So it wasn't even that she was uncomfortable in a dress. It was that she didn't like the way it looked on her. Yeah. And I mean, say something in the fitting then. Say, you know, Kevin, yeah. you know, Madison, say something earlier. Why are you punishing everyone on the day of? And my, my other issue is what that did is made it all about her. Yeah, she was trying not to say anything, but I mean, <laughs> she wasn't saying anything, but by not saying anything, she was punishing everybody. Yeah. So, I mean, either way you look at it, it was made about her in that moment than about her uncle getting married. If she did not like it, she knew her uncle well enough, she should have said something. And Beth, yeah. maybe if maybe if Beth would have caught it earlier, or if she would have been vocal or whatever, Beth could have gone up to Kevin and Madison and be like, you know what, she really doesn't like this. Can she change it? And they would have said yes. Yeah. And I don't yeah. think they were mad that they changed it then. I that's not my issue. It's just that she was punishing everyone for ending up in nearly the exact same thing. All they did was put a black T-shirt on over the dress. Yeah, that's true. I mean that that was it. So it was really that. I don't like this particular dress. That was my, that was my big issue. She was punishing everyone for that. Yeah. It would be different if the whole thing had to be altered. If she needed pants or shorts or something instead of a skirt, if she really felt that uncomfortable, but it was really, I just don't like this dress. Yeah. I, I mean, I can, I can see that. I don't know. It just didn't bother me as much as it seemed to have bothered everybody else. <laughs> I, I don't think I was as bothered by it. I mean, some people were mean. Yeah. yeah. A lot of people were really triggered by it. I was like, I, I was surprised <laughs> at how upset people were about that. Mm -hmm. I think that was the most like lively discussion of all the discussion posts. It was that were put up. I was like, wow, I didn't think this would be the one that got so many comments. Mm -hmm. Right. And I was talking more about the conversation than even like the alteration of the dress. I mean, I thought it was a really good conversation that they had. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you know, I thought handled it really well. Mm -hmm. And I liked that, you know, I mean, you know, Tess, you know, she told her she loved her and, you know, I mean, they made the joke that she may not, you know, again, but, you know, I, I don't know. I just really, I enjoyed that Tess finally opened up a little bit, yeah. which we hadn't really seen happen. So I agree. But then yeah. part of me, the devil's advocate me was wondering, is she being nice because she just got what she wanted? Mm, I, I didn't take it that way. I mean, I took it as a way that, I don't know, she maybe she felt heard and she felt recognized by by Beth doing this something for her and she felt like she was able to I don't know just open up more that's that's all I saw I think she's just a 13 year old kid who's just emotions are all over the place yeah like it's just yeah I can agree with that I just no. I, I, I don't know <laughs> I think that she I've just been annoyed by her and Beth's relationship lately yeah I just this was the first time that I was like, yeah, Beth, yes, that's the perfect way to handle it. Instead of the sighing and looking, I mean, the way Tess has been talking to Beth has been unacceptable. Yeah. And I don't yeah. care how old you are. The way she's been talking to Beth has been unacceptable. And Beth has been letting it go because yeah. she's struggling yeah. with an oversexuality. She's 13. She's just having a hard time. That was really bothering me too. I was like, Beth, this isn't you. Like, why are you accepting this? You know she wouldn't accept it from Deja or Annie. That's true. So that's, I think that's my other issue is that I've been watching that relationship and getting annoyed at it because of that. Because she says on one hand, the rules are the same for everybody, but they're not the same for everybody. Because yeah. Tess is having a harder time, so Tess gets more leeway with her mouth than the other girls do. Granted, the other yeah. girls aren't using their mouth that way. But you know that the moment Deja or Annie would snap at her or say something rude, Beth would have a comeback. But yeah. with Tess, she tries to, and I think I, I think part of that as a mother, I can understand that because she's feeling the loss and she's feeling the separation <laughs> up there, and she wants to not make it. She wants to get close again instead of making the separation. So she, that's why she's letting it go. But you still can't let that go. So mm -hmm. the fact that Beth came out and said, "Listen, I know that I'm doing everything wrong for you lately." But this has got to stop. And that that was the moment it was kind of redeeming for me. And to see Tess actually respond well right. to that was a redeeming moment for Tess for me because she has been ticking me off for weeks. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. that was really surprising to see her reacting so well. Mm -hmm. And like, I, I get you're an adolescent. I get that you're struggling with your sexuality. I, I get all that stuff. But I just, I don't tolerate disrespect well. 
Yeah. Even in my own home. Like I don't, I don't tolerate it. Well, I probably should be better at it, but I'm not. That's why I, I was originally going to school to be a teacher and I realized I would get arrested. So I just decided <laughs> to back out of that. So watching her disrespect her mom over and over and over and over and over again was just like, I've had enough of this kid. <laughs> and to have yeah. her, to have her even say her say, which wasn't, in, it wasn't necessarily in line with what Rebecca wanted to hear or what uh, Beth wanted to hear, but she was respectful in how she spoke to Beth. And mm-hmm. I was like, all right, Tess is coming back. Good. I'm, yeah. <laughs> I'm glad she's I think back. so. And what about Malik getting into Harvard? I was so proud of him. Oh, that's exciting. Mm-hmm. I know. And then poor Deja though. I mean, I'm sure she's just so worried about, you know, yeah, the long distance there, but I wish she would have a huge that accomplishment. Well I know, but I mean, I don't know. Maybe she's she a can't. teenager in love. So exactly. I mean, she even kind of, you know, when she was joking with was it she's talking to annie about you know if she yeah. had thought about it she was like oh no but then she obviously had thought about marrying mm-hmm. him and you know deja's so mature but sometimes yeah. i forget that she's just a, you know a teenager and mm-hmm. so i mean i like that moment but and she's like two years younger than malik isn't she malik's a senior she's a sophomore is she just a sophomore i was thinking maybe she was like 16 but she when might they be 15. first moved there i think she was a freshman and he was a junior isn't that the way it was mm, maybe maybe yeah so because she was in be middle sense. she was in middle school i think when um she met the pearsons oh i think so. I was when she met malik i was like what no no that would be a little weird <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> no she was in middle school when she met the pearsons so i would say yeah. she's probably like a sophomore i think so yeah. too so i mean mm-hmm. she's still the other aspect is she still has two years before she can even be anywhere near him if he goes to boston yeah but at but what is it in California anymore? I know. I'm like, I, of course, I don't know much about, you know, I don't know how far Philadelphia is to Boston, but I would think my it would geography be, is great. I know exactly how long. I would is. think it would be like drive worthy, like not, you know, something Did she doable. Say two hours. Was it just two hours? I thought that's what she said. <laughs> it's just two I'm hours. I'm looking it up right now. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I'm like, that's no big deal. But I guess at 15, maybe that seems like a really long way. But two hour drive, especially is, if you don't you know, have a car or a license. Yeah. You have to have your yeah. parents take you every time. Yeah. But I could see Randall probably would do it <laughs> with me. <laughs> Randall loves it. Malik. Of course yes. he would do that. Yeah. I mean, once you find, when you have daughters, of course, mine are not dating yet. Thank God. No. Not but, for a long time. <laughs> when you do. It's have, about five hours, by the way. Five hours. Okay. Harvard okay. and Philadelphia, it's a five hour drive. So that's five hours. Trip. Yeah, but it's still a weekend trip. Yeah, you could do it maybe not every weekend, but you could oh. do it you know yeah but there's zoom and there's all these i mean they've been trained for a year on how to internet communicate so it's doable <laughs> definitely doable it's much more doable now than it was 10 years ago so mm-hmm. and i have to imagine that randall would feel more comfortable with this because college boy and his high school daughter can't do anything over the internet so <laughs> exactly <laughs> yeah that may be another issue they may not she obviously probably can't go up there for the weekend by herself because that would not be okay i think randall's so. gonna be like yeah boy go to harvard yes that's <laughs> and you know Randall trying to be really suave and cool about it <laughs> yeah but I love Malik I wish we saw more of him I mean just to think about this kid and his accomplishments and being a single like teenage dad mm-hmm. on top of that I mean that's a huge accomplishment and he and Deja are so well matched in their maturity they are they definitely are and you look I at love the things them. that they've had to overcome and the things that like she was a mother to her mother and he's a father to his daughter and so they have they had that aspect of being able to and desiring to care for someone else more than themselves. And I think that leads to a really healthy relationship. I agree. Agree. And they're both firm enough that they don't let anyone walk all over them. Right. Yeah. All right, Eve. They're good. Yep. <laughs> yeah. I wish we got to see more of Malik this season because we didn't get to see a lot of them. Mm-mm. I don't think, I mean, we saw him when he came over for dinner Mm-hmm. I think when what was it Randall showed him his, his shrub or I don't know what, whatever it was that he named or something yeah and but then he had... just saw him talking to Deja on the phone like this in the finale but I don't remember seeing him not much, um, no. much. Yeah. they probably had to pick and choose and limit we yeah. also don't see a whole lot of Felicia Rashad either after she moves in with them no we saw more of her before she moved in with them than we do after. So I, 
I was really excited. I was like, oh, we're going to see more of, um, you know, Beth's mom. This is great. And then they didn't show her again after that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Maybe next season, I guess. I don't know. I am glad, though, that Annie's appearing in more scenes. Me too. Because I want more of her, too. Yeah, Yeah. I want to see more of Annie because she's, like, between Deja and um, Tess, like, we don't really get too much of Annie. Mm -hmm. But we did get to see adult Annie, so maybe that's a... I don't know, maybe that's a clue that we're about to see more of a storyline with her in the present. Yeah. 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 I hope that Deja is with uh, Malik still in the future. I do too. Oh, I mean, yeah. it's sometimes unrealistic, you know. Liv? No, they're gonna stay together <sighs> forever. I know, but they need to be the one couple that's like still together. <laughs> one, <laughs> Randall is gonna bring the Pearson <laughs> fantasy <laughs> home through his entire line. <laughs> well, I wonder because they didn't show who the father of her baby was, right? No, no, okay. she just mentioned that she was pregnant to Dan's like, not gonna do that. <laughs> Yeah, it was adult Annie that she was talking to. Yeah. About that, right? Yeah. And maybe it's Malik's. I think so. I think she went to, she's going to medical school, right? Yes. I think she went to Harvard Medical School. You know what? She might. Mm-hmm. I could see her doing that. Yeah. yeah. And we need we need at least one happy ending that we yeah. like. So yes, please. <laughs> and, oh, speaking of that, I love that Rebecca is the one who commissioned Jack's house. Me too. It. That mm-hmm. yeah. just, that just mm-hmm. completed a story for me that I didn't know I needed completing. Yeah, yeah, because I thought it was going to be Kevin just wanting to do it, but I, I liked it. Like Rebecca, that, yeah, but... yeah, that's what yeah. I thought too. That I was like, oh wait, it was all Rebecca's idea. That's mm-hmm. even better. Mm-hmm. Because I think a lot of fans too, like they they miss that Jack and Rebecca dynamic <clears throat> with Miguel, and I think yeah. the first season especially. Before, I mean, I knew Jack died somehow. Obvious. Well, no, I didn't at first. We didn't know he died at first in the first season. Um, we knew that he and Rebecca were not together, but it yeah, took a, a few more episodes after that to real to learn that he died. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So, and the first when we were sort of watching This Is Us, and Miguel showed up with Rebecca, it was like, oh, "What are you doing with him?" And I was so yeah. mad. Like I, that was one of the reasons I kept watching this because I wanted to know: Did she? Are they divorced, or did he die? Like that was my whole point at first. Not yes. my whole point, but one of the big points. And so I think as fans, some of us were kind of still kind of are sore from that, that Miguel is the one with her and Jack isn't. And we, I mean, for us too, like Jack died at the height of their their marriage, at the you know, the goodness that was coming. They were about to be empty nesters and he he mm-hmm. died before they could really experience much of that. And so I think it was nice for us to see her still harbor something for Jack there and still yeah. want because that house was bringing Jack back into the family. I mean, it was Jack's design. It was what Jack wanted. It's how he thought it should be. And they did it according to his specifications. So it's like bringing Jack back into the home. And she mm-hmm. did mention to um, the big three that she was having a harder and harder time inserting yeah. Jack into their present day lives too. So mm-hmm. yeah, this is a good way to do that. Yeah. Yeah. Now, in that scene in the future with Rebecca, is Miguel there or is it just Nikki? We haven't seen Miguel. We haven't seen Miguel yeah so hopefully he's Pardon nothing me, bad's happened died. to him oh well, i mean i don't want that either i mean i don't well, want him to I get mean, divorced they're super old that's what i'm saying that's why <sighs> part of me hopes that he died because if i don't want them to be divorced that would be horrible god the girl's one of my favorites i don't want i'd rather him die him of die. natural causes maybe he's like maybe he's actually like six years older than rebecca and maybe he died when he was like 95 mm. that makes me sad <laughs> i don't, I don't want them to be divorced this, i mean that's that's really sad that I'm saying I hope he died. I but I mean, I don't want them to be divorced. I just want him to be there. Maybe he's just in the other room and we just haven't seen him yet. Or maybe he's maybe not there him. yet. I don't think Nikki don't... would be in that room and have Miguel still be in that house and have Miguel not be in that room, but Nikki be in the room. Maybe he's doing something with one of the grandkids. I mean, I don't, we don't know. I'm hoping he's around. Somewhere. When Rebecca is near death? No, I don't think so. <sighs> I don't think he'd be going around begging for hugs from all the grandkids. That was really creepy, by the way. Yeah. Oh, that um, was cute. Must I like have it. more. Hug- yeah, then he started looking like a zombie, and I think who was it? Um, Randall. Is I think like, he was just getting like, creepy. No, that was. Bad. just being. Oh, it was just being. Because he's like, is this? I don't know. Is this creepy or endearing? She's like, I don't know yet. <laughs> and then he did it again. She's like, oh yeah. By the way, it's creepy now. It's really creepy now. 
I think he's just being that cringy grandpa, you know, with the, I mean, you know, I think he's just doing something goofy and silly. And oh, every one of them ignored him completely. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And he was just kind of like, ooh. Yeah. <laughs> like shrugged away from him and like ducked out of there. Well, they're all probably getting to that age where it's just not cool to be hugging on parents and grandparents. So, you know. That's true. Not Annie. Annie's never going to be to that age. I don't know. Annie's going to be sweet little Annie. Who cares? She's going to be a sweet little angel all the way through. Yep. To... Maybe. She's yeah. going to be a yeah. Randall, I think. I think she'll be she the one be. who's most like Randall. She's got his eyes. Don't we keep yep. saying that? <laughs> yeah. Yep. Oh, that was yep. a sweet moment when she was like, yeah. you have her eyes. Mm-hmm. <laughs> sweet. I like, I like that. I don't like seeing Sterling <sighs> cry, by the way. I know we're back on Rando, but every time he flipping cries, I cannot handle it. <laughs> it's just, like I mean, him. <laughs> there's just something about his big old eyes and yes. filled with tears. And I mean, it kills me every time. Every single know. time. Mm-hmm. <laughs> him more than anybody, I yes. think, on the show. Yeah, definitely. Even, I was going through and editing our, our last podcast where we're talking about his emotional breakdown <sighs> and you can actually hear that I'm crying through, yeah. through the audio. I didn't cry when we were talking about anybody else's story, but just talking about his stories like makes me lose it. Mm-hmm. I don't know. I don't know how he got so good at emoting like that. Maybe he had a jacket <sighs> for dad, but man, when he cries, it's I rough. don't know. That was it's I did cry in that scene. <laughs> yeah, he goes all yeah. out when he cries. It's pretty <laughs> And that I was a subtle one. Cried. Yeah, you, you don't hear it. You just see the tears falling. I was like, oh no, oh no. Like, here it comes. <laughs> and then he said the mom come out. I was like, ah. Oh. That got me. Yeah. <laughs> so let's, sweet. let's go on to the next couple of Toby and Kate. Okay. Are we, or, I, can't, oh, I thought we'd save them for last. I'm going to get all worked we up. We can here. save that ending for last. But let's. There's more to talk about them in the episode. Okay. Well, actually, let's talk about Kevin and Madison first. Let's do that. <laughs> yes, please. Because <laughs> I'm gonna get I'm gonna get lost on Kate and Toby, and we're gonna yeah, run out of time. I think I think Jeanette and I are gonna get a little worked up over that. I mean, I went into this episode like uh, I'm gonna be really mad if Kevin and Madison don't get married. I didn't realize we were gonna hit me with something else that was yeah. gonna like destroy me even more. Mm-hmm. That one really made me mad. Kevin like, and I was Madison actually knew. Kevin and Madison. It, <laughs> it, yeah, I know. You know, I was really proud of Madison um I mean, her backstory how sad yeah how sad about her dad telling her like you don't need some like this big like fancy like spark like just find someone i mean i'm like just find who someone who's me? willing to go with you it's like who, who? tells their teenage daughter that yeah. yeah that's terrible and i was i mean just the fact that she recognized her own worth and that she didn't need to marry someone who didn't love her i mean mm-hmm. good for her i mean i know i love kevin but good for her i mean he couldn't tell her that and he didn't deserve to marry her and that scene like a little further on where she was that that boyfriend was breaking up with her and she was kind of trying to be like okay we can work through this he's like no i don't think you understand like there's no conversation here like we're done so it was kind of nice to see that she's finally accepted that maybe this isn't for her right yeah and I think the significance of that story too was that I think that boyfriend is the one who helped her realize her worth because he said, as Madison, I'm talking to as a friend right now, after everything I've just said, there shouldn't be anything else to say. After what I've yeah. just told you, you yeah. should still be trying to convince me to stay with you. And I think that that was the significance they were trying to show in that storyline was that this boyfriend was like, listen, if I don't want to be with you, why are you pushing yourself to want to be with me? Yeah. So I thought that was, I thought that yeah. guy was a pretty solid guy. And then I kind of liked that we flashed to you know her first scene where you know I have to admit I hated Madison. <laughs> she was annoying at first. I mean, yeah, it's amazing. I, was annoying. It's I did amazing not like her at the, all. Yeah, the transformation of her going from someone who I mean I when if we were to look back on our Facebook page of like I mean I despise Madison <laughs> pre Kevin, and then all of a sudden like she's one of my favorites. Mm-hmm. I love yeah. her. I mean, seeing that first, that scene where like she's at the, um, that support group, I think that's mm-hmm. where we first meet her. And I remember I'm like, <laughs> gosh, this girl is annoying. What is her problem? Right. But now seeing Madison through different eyes and then seeing that scene again, I felt yeah. a lot for her. I guess that it's, scene, we I never like, know what. On. Yeah. I was like, come on people. Don't, yeah. you know, I guess don't you never know this poor girl. <laughs> you never know what people are going through. And I guess that's the point of that, you know, that. 
it was she was struggling and here we just thought she was being obnoxious you know it was a really funny scene though that she wouldn't <laughs> You guys I think just don't just understand what it that feels she... like with three extra pounds in the middle. Oh my god! Yeah, I think it's just know. the way it was phrased. I was like, "Really? You're at a support group for people who yes. are trying to lose weight?" Yeah, yeah. <laughs> she could have. She could have chosen any other stuff to go into. Yeah, I think but, it was. I, mean, just, I honestly think it was just a ditzy moment. I think she probably. I mean. If you had that issue of body image, it's body distortion where you cannot see yourself in any good light. Right. It makes sense that she wouldn't want to be around people who are anorexic or people yeah. who are bulimic because they're dangerously thin, grossly thin. And she would have wanted that and aspired to that. So it does make sense in that context that if she actually really truly wanted to get help and be better, that she didn't want to be around those people who are struggling in that way, I think. Yeah. I agree. But yeah. I was proud you of think? her, but I was also proud of Kevin. Yeah. Because Kevin is so used to just saying what they want to hear so he can get what he thinks he wants. Mm -hmm. But when he sat there and looked at his mom and said, I couldn't, I couldn't do that to her. I couldn't, I couldn't <laughs> lie to her. I couldn't say what she wanted to hear in that moment. I couldn't do it. I was really proud of him then too, because he could have. He could have lied mm -hmm. and said, you know, Madison, I love you, but he decided to be honest and tell her. And it, what I tweeted was, it's really, really painful to watch Kevin say all the right things, but all the wrong things at the same time, because mm -hmm. those things were all really nice. They were, they were heartwarming and they were sweet, but they were not the right thing to no. say to enter. It's not what Madison needed to hear. And yeah. it's not the way to enter a new marriage. No. Not for that. But I do feel, I mean, like he said, you know, that they can grow. I mean, I'm still hopeful that mm -hmm. it is them in the end. Yeah. Um, and you know, just maybe, muscle they are. Yeah, they were very comfortable. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, someone pointed out, which I, I meant to go back and kind of just try to we'll see it for myself, but that there was like women's clothing in his closet. Um, there was like there was women's clothing in the closet, and then that's the part that I went back and rewatched was the last few minutes that was fast forwarded in the future. Yeah. And there was if you when he's in the bathroom, like there's like a sparkly little like toiletry case too. Okay. And then Madison also says something like, I've told you however many times. Like, like I told today. you a million times this morning already. Yeah. So maybe it's her that's with him, mm -hmm. you know, at that point in time. So I'm hoping. I think that because some people are like, no, they're only doing it to fake you out. But this show isn't like a thriller mystery. This right. show does throw you for a loop, but this throw the show is also yeah. dealing in hope. And this this, this show isn't cool wanna, summer. This show <laughs> doesn't just want to cut you off from every good thing all at one time. If they take something from you, they usually give you something too. Mm -hmm. And I think the way they ripped it out from under us with Toby and Kate. I mean, yeah, we were all kind of assuming that's what happened, but the way they spoke in that episode, we weren't. <laughs> so to take that from us. And mm -hmm. to know that Rebecca is going to be dying soon if, because the next, the last season's coming up, I think they're going to put <clears> a little <throat> bit more hope into these to these endings. And so, yeah, I think it was a 50-50 thing. I think that he was they were intentionally leaving this hope about Madison because there is still hope for them. Yeah, I hope yeah. it's not Sophie, but that's just no. I think it's I think it's going to be. I really do think it's going to be Madison because the one one is that Kevin he doesn't I don't think he I think it's just that he doesn't realize that he loves her because Kevin mm -hmm. still has a whole bunch of baggage that he carries with them always that he needs to get rid of and mm -hmm. I think he's going to re-examine himself after this because for him to say I couldn't lie to her like that in that moment is a huge character development for Kevin yes huge and that I, makes go ahead I'm sorry no I was just gonna say and him doing that makes me think that Kevin you do love her Mm -hmm. because the fact that you couldn't lie to her exactly just to say what you think she wants just to make her happy mm -hmm. i think means you know that that you do love her and you yeah. know maybe i i think you all were rushing the whole marriage idea mm -hmm. just because you had kids but i i think you guys can get there mm -hmm. and i think that him the only woman who's going to be a constant in his life and because his, i mean his mom is older than him she's going to eventually die and he's not going to have her is going to be the mother of his children Mm -hmm. they're going to grow old in the same way they're going to have the same connections they're going to have the same ties they're going to have the same everything because he's going to see her regularly because she's the mother of his children and mm -hmm. obviously we've seen in you know the future at the cabin that his kids are definitely there like they're in his yeah. life so i mean obviously and he's got a wedding yeah. ring on 
Yes, I was going to say that too. So, so he's well, forty-five in the when he reverses for or reverses forward when they shoot forward. He's forty-five. Mm-hmm. I wish they would say how old they are in the flash forward, like the super. I forward. think it's well, five. Years. I think they're forty because I think. Mm-mm. Remember, he told Randall, it's like, I'm going to be married. That's like, currently, be- though. He's 40 yeah. currently. Yeah, he's 40 currently. Then he was 45. Yeah, well, but I wonder how old he is in the super flash forward. Oh, in those. Well, let's yeah. think about like Deja. If Deja's in medical school, then you're probably in your late 20s, correct? I mean, that's well, typically when you would like, you know, mid to late 20s, you would make it into medical school. And, and we've, we've seen Kevin's the- kids. They look like they're probably not that old though 11 oh, like 10, 10 maybe? like 10 really? 10 11 something like that I think yeah. like 50 50 55 because I mean Rebecca's okay, already that. old she can't last that much longer right and it's progress I mean yeah I would say it's probably maybe another five years yeah. past that five to six but years they past really that. aged up Kevin and Randall and that's what's throwing me because Kevin and Randall are both almost completely that's gray true. they look like 60 yeah, I mean, like, if and I was how to guess old is Rebecca? Because she already looks pretty old, and she's got Alzheimer's right now. I mean, she, she have have to Alzheimer's be like eighty last that long. Yeah, but I was gonna say she would have to be. I mean, because she wasn't super young when she had them. She was probably in her twenties as well. Yeah, or thirties even maybe. I think she was. I wasn't. Didn't mm-hmm. she have a thirtieth birthday right before she had them? Maybe. I'm trying to remember. No, that's Jack's birthday. That was. That was Jack. That was yeah. Jack. yeah, I was gonna say, wasn't that Jack? No, that was hers because he was in his birthday suit for her, wasn't it? No, that's his birthday. <laughs> that was his birthday because he had the, the the terrible towel and oh, yeah, she had that really sad cupcake that she got at the <sighs> oh, at the she was enormously <laughs> pregnant. Oh my goodness! Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, but this yeah. current season, this current episode, <laughs> I, I do think I do think that there is hope because this would be mm-hmm. where we see it is five years in the future mm-hmm. he and madison had a really good report and obviously they're they're parents of the same kids but i felt like their rapport was too close she was too happy to see him she was it was very yeah easy. it was not and the way he looked at her he smiled directly at her when like it was an affectionate smile that he gave her mm-hmm. obviously i know it's it was more than still. just it was more than just you know co-parents being yeah. friendly with each other i think i think that if they're not okay. he wasn't wearing a wedding ring so they aren't married yeah. yet, but I think they're together. Yeah. And I think that they will, the next wedding we see will be his and Madison's. Because Randall's yeah. never ending. If they, seriously, if Randall and Beth divorce, I'm going to be so mad. <laughs> Do you remember that one season finale where they sort of implied that? I mean, yes. I was like ready to riot because they are my favorite couple. And mm-hmm. I, I wouldn't have, I would have stopped watching. I think I would have been mad. And they have been the solid. They have been the constant. Mm-hmm. If they ended that way, I'm going to sue Dan Fogelman for emotional distress. Absolutely. I'm with you. <laughs> Joint lawsuit over here. That would be so horrible. But we don't see no, Beth. We won't. see Randall retreating into himself. And of course it could be because his mom's dying, but we see her. Yeah, they show her. I remember seeing her. Yeah, we, yeah they went and <clears throat> she showed up after. Or did they go pick her up? They, I don't remember if they went to pick her up, but they showed her like at her dance she's studio. At the, and she's at the, the cabin. Future. They show her at the cabin too. Like she all. gets there. It's only like in one episode that we've seen like her be at the cabin. Okay, good. Then I'm, I'm not. I think that. she and Toby like exchanged a few words. Yes. Okay. So have we said all we need to say about Kevin and Madison? Yeah, I think so. Are you ready? For now. Do we ready. have to? Okay. <laughs> So Toby and Kate, they, I actually love Toby and Kate. I love them. I do. I don't get why people don't like them together. I think that they make each other better. I didn't particularly like Kate before and I didn't, Toby was kind of like, wow, dude, you need to like calm down a little bit. A lot of people really don't like Kate. And I think that just translates over to not liking Kate and Toby. Maybe because Kate, I used to not like her very much. I mean, I, I will admit that, but I've always liked them as a couple, though. Like, even mm. though I didn't like her individually, um, and I don't know how people don't like Toby because I think Toby yeah. is wonderful. Yeah. He's got his own, he's got flaws, but so does everybody else. Mm-hmm. I mean, and you know, a lot of his flaws you can attribute <laughs> to his depression, which I don't think yeah. he should be held accountable. I mean, like, that's that's a medical, I mean, that's a medical condition, that's not something that's in his control. Um, yeah. 
you know, it is what it is. I mean, I don't know. And I was so glad because we've seen him begin to return to himself. Yeah. And I was pretty disappointed in Kate when they had their conversation because it seemed to me like she was just not willing to look for a solution. Like, well, fine, you know, whatever and end it. And I was really upset, but I was glad that they brought it back and they had a conversation mm-hmm. about it because whether him saying, I am, I want to be considered for this job. And I don't even think that was that big of a deal because what his plan was is what I thought it was of, yes, I want to be considered for this job. And then he went right home to Kate and said, Hey, I told them I want to be considered for this job. Yeah. So like he was hiding it. He was at a bachelor party with his brother or with his brother-in-laws. So he wasn't hiding it. He immediately went home and told Kate about it, but Kate was like, Nope, I'm shutting it down. And yeah. I was really disappointed. And, that, and them coming back together. I mean, I feel like that's what they normally do, which is yeah. why the divorce has really like, mm-hmm confused me because i don't yeah. feel like that's usually how they handle things i mean they usually do i mean find a compromise i mean and it's only five years from there where she's getting remarried not even more the divorce she's getting remarried yeah. in five years so i yeah, can't I, even imagine uh, i don't know i went back and rewatched it because i was trying to figure out if maybe there was some way to flip it around where it wasn't them too I did like the same thing. Getting married, but I don't think there's another way to interpret that. No, I mean, who I else is he going to marry that makes him his brother-in-law? Can't marry Randall because he's already got a woman. He's not going to marry Kevin because he's clearly into women. There's, there's no other way for him to become Kevin's brother-in-law. I know. I and was if really trying to if he married Kevin. He wouldn't be a brother-in-law. He would be a husband. You know? <laughs> I was really trying to like poke through that conversation, trying to find something. But honestly, I think I looked up an article and I think Dan Fogelman confirms the fact that Kate's remarrying her boss mm-hmm. in the I future. I don't like it. No. I like it at all. Because you have to figure that they dated for at least, at least a year, which puts it at four years, which means that she would have been divorced in three years at least. So what happens something- in those three years that they get, well, minimum three years. What, what happens? something happens before she's divorced, which I hope we don't go down that route. But I mean, this is what she's working with, and it but happens all the time. That's a cheap way to end it. That's I, a cheap way to end it. That's not good writing I, at all. I really am upset. I mean, I never thought that we, I thought we would have our, I don't know. Toby's been in it from the beginning. Mm-hmm. So to just kind of toss him out here at the end just feels, I mean, it feels really wrong. And I mean, I'm legit mad about it. Yeah. If because I could I, see Dan Fogelman, I would tell him how mad I am about this. I mean, like this, I feel cheated. I feel cheated yes. for investing so much time into this relationship. Mm-hmm. Because, I mean, you look at what she, I mean, after she, there was sort of an indication with after she got off the phone with her boss and her boss said all those nice things about her and she got the phone and was like, mm-hmm. oh, but Toby's the first one who did that for her. Yes. Toby is the first one who made Kate really, really, truly understand her worth, who made her understand that she actually had value. Kate never thought she had value, which is why she was such an annoying character. She thought mm-hmm. she was worthless, so she acted worthless. Right. But Toby was the first one and continues to, by the way, affirm in her how good she is and how worthful or how worthful, how much worth she has and how valuable she is. Mm-hmm. So for her to, to get excited about this guy who's giving her these compliments if that's what starts it i'm gonna be ticked because toby has been miserable anyone can see how miserable and altered toby is did she once say would it make you feel better to go back to work yeah no she didn't and i know they had that conversation a couple episodes back where they were talking about him being a stay-at-home dad and he kind of said he didn't want to do it but i think for kate she just doesn't understand why he wouldn't want to because she wants right so he must be fine. And I think she just kind of glossed over the fact that Toby is in a really bad mental state because he needs to be working. Mm-hmm. And there's nothing wrong with that. I mean, I no. feel like, I mean, and there's nothing wrong with him not wanting to stay home with his kids. Oh. That doesn't make him a bad father. There's nothing wrong. I mean, I, I'm, I'm a working mother. I, that doesn't make me a bad mother that I don't want to stay home with my kids all day long. I mean, sometimes they drive me crazy. I don't want to do that. Yeah, that doesn't mean that I don't love them dearly and I'm grateful for them every single day. I mean, so it, uh, it's frustrating. <laughs> Absolutely. And, and I, I mean, think- it's not like he didn't try to find something close by either. Mm-hmm. I mean, he tried for a long time. A and, long time. You know, we've seen several people, I mean, several people close to me that have been unemployed during all of this mess. It is yeah. hard to find a job right now. But he also tried to do the stay at home dad thing he did he really did try to just do that 
Mm-hmm. But we saw what happens when Toby, because he has clinical depression. We saw what happens yeah. when he's in that boat. He has to be working with his mind. Yeah. And I mean, him being in that kind of depression and not and being in something he's unhappy about would only, I mean, that's not good for the kids. That's not, no. he doesn't need to be home with them. I mean, he's not going to be able to handle that, you know? Mm-hmm. Yeah. I agree with that. So I, I really hope there's something we're misunderstanding. That's what I'm whole. I, I'm, I'm just hoping there's something that we're not understanding. I really I'm am not looking forward to a polygamous relationship. No, I don't want that either, but <laughs> I don't what know. You, I don't I'm going to have to go back and watch that again and again and again, because I feel like there has to be something we're misinterpreting. I just don't know. Like there's the not. new brother-in-law comment. It's like, I don't know where else I to said go with that. Thing. I think I said the same thing. Remember when I first watched it, I was like, is there any way we're misinterpreting this comment? Because I was my like, thing I just was, can't. Oh, my thing was, okay, maybe they're tricking us. Maybe the brother-in-law comment is a different timeline than when he was in the room talking to, you nope. know, everybody and Kate's in the wedding dress. So I was like, no, that seems a little ridiculous. Uh-huh. Yeah. It's that, it I is what know. it is. I mean, it's, it's what we think it is, but I think what, I think, I don't think I would have been as surprised if they kept the storyline going the way it had been going. But then in that episode, they had Kate and Toby finally have a real talk come together. Kate saying, I remember what my vow said, and I'm, I'm going to stand by them. I'm going to honor them. And Toby saying, I don't want you to quit your job. I'll, I right. won't go. And her saying, no, you have to go. And him saying, but we, I don't want to leave you. I don't want to do this. And then confessing how much he loves her. And she's like, you just love this. No, I actually love you. And that talk that they had literally seconds before they show that they're going to have a divorce. Like, that what, is the <laughs> I, what is the point? What is the point of having know. that conversation? Yeah. Just to mess with us. That is and what the, I'm most mad about, I yeah. think. Yeah. Like, I want well, Toby just... and, and Kate to be like endgame, but I'm most mad that they built up that relationship. They built up that conversation. Even if you just took the last episode alone. They built it up, they repaired it, and then they tore it all down. Like, mm-hmm. Because they put that couple through pretty much everything. Yeah. yeah. And you kind of got into your head like, oh, you know, they're going through all this crap, but, you know, it's going to make them stronger. Mm-hmm. And they're not the kind of couple that's just going to give up. Well, never mind. Yeah. Right. They did. And now she's remarrying someone else. <laughs> Because I think they're the ones that you can compare to Jack and Rebecca more mm-hmm. than any of the others. Absolutely. I mean, so I really thought they were going to be in game. <clears throat> yeah, me too. I wasn't worried. I mean, even seeing him sitting in that bed in the future without her, I just knew that something we were going, something was going to work out. I mean, I, I never in my mind did I think we weren't going to end with Toby and Kate together, though. Mm-hmm. I agree with that. I mean, our, I was blown. I mean, so I remember away. saying at the time, well, there's no way that they'd get divorced. So right. maybe died. that's why we were all like, Kate must have died. <laughs> I'm like, yeah, well, never mind. Died. <laughs> it's not that, way. and I think I was reading a comment from something like, I know everyone wanted Kate to be dead. No, we didn't. We just no. would rather her, like Miguel and Rebecca. I would rather her be dead <laughs> than have them be divorced. <laughs> like we were that, picking yeah. the. Like we I had two she, options that sucked and we were picking the yes, one that sucked yeah. the least. I mean, I guess she has small kids, so I guess I don't want her dead necessarily, but dang, I mean. That's the other sad part is they just adopted that baby girl. So that baby girl yeah. is three when they get divorced. Like that's a bummer. Yeah. And that birth mom chose them because of how they were with each other. Mm-hmm. And then yeah. this baby girl gets divorced parents at three. And for no reason, like, I, the, you know, divorce happens. And I'm not one of those people that thinks a couple seem to stay together forever just because you have kids. I don't believe that. But there is like Kate and Toby are, you're good. Like there's nothing that should lead you to a divorce. Like that's no. what I don't understand. You've I already mean, done it all. Yeah. Well, and you've gotten like, through it. And Well, there is that three year gap. We don't know what happened there. Something big. Yeah. But even in there, I mean, the options are because she's marrying her boss. The options are she had an affair. That's mm-hmm. a cheap way to end it not good writing at all or toby says i love it here i want to stay here and kate says i don't want to go there well let's end it also cheap shot because freaking kevin can do it toby and kate can't do it for all they've done been through that Mm -hmm. doesn't make sense either so no matter how you divide and split them up it doesn't i can't find a way that makes sense it doesn't make sense 
I mean, like, I can't spin it in any way that makes sense. They better wrap all of the stuff. Maybe the Toby's going to crash the wedding. And be like, Kate, don't marry Jackson. <laughs> Jackson Avery style, right? Eve, you know what I'm talking and then about. They, you know? And then they run off into the sunset. Like, yes, uh, let's do it. <laughs> like Grey's Anatomy. Yes. Yeah. Oh, is that what you're referencing? <laughs> yeah, that's my Sarah Drew's character and yeah, my favorite couple. So that's how they get together. They interrupt a wedding. And, but then they well, ended up getting divorced. So. I know. It was tragic, too. <laughs> I'll now like, why yeah, would you make that comparison to toby and kate right now when we're all so sensitive why would you do that because they've come back together maybe not romantically but i have hope that that's where it's going now that they're going to be together now that jesse williams is it's off the thing. show and so is yeah they, they went they're moving to boston together it's all going to be a nice happy ending so as long as we don't see a spinoff that you know proves otherwise exactly. that's where my mind believes they're going to live happily ever after <laughs> So the redeeming part about the ending was Nikki's married. Yes. Yep. Do, do, do you all think he found Sally? That's what yes. I think. Yeah, because that's what I'm hoping. For the way Nikki's head is and the personality he has, <laughs> I love Nikki, but can you just take a moment and imagine what it's like to be married to that man? Yeah. No one else can probably love him but her. That's already... I love him as a weird uncle. As yeah. a husband, I think I would murder him. So, Oh, for just, sure. Like in a good way, not in a bad way. I mean, he's yeah. a fun, quirky uncle, but I couldn't exactly. be married to that. <laughs> and if he's married, not just dating someone, but married within five years, it has to be it someone he has... already knows. Exactly. Yeah. Because, I mean, the Nikki we know, he wouldn't meet someone and get married within five years. Like, no. that's way no, no. too short amount of time for him. Mm-hmm. Right. And I, I do think that people, I think people are like, well, no, that's too obvious. Well, yeah, you could say that, but then you also have to look at the character. Well, I suppose that what? Kate and Toby are divorced, so now I can't look at the character development. And we only have one more season, so it's not like character. you can build up something major, you know? I mean, character development doesn't mean anything anymore. Nope. Oh. <laughs> nope. I'm bitter. I'm, I'm really bitter about this. I'm, I'm mad. I mean, and I don't know if I'm going to not be mad about it. Not until they bring them back together. Yeah. I mean, I'm going to feel like I wasted six years of my life if they don't end up yes. together at the end. I, actually, and I, never, I never even knew that Kate and Toby were that favorite of a couple for me until you tore them apart. And then I was like, <laughs> I mean, it, it was, it shook me that I was this upset about it. Like, but I was. They were always one of my favorites. But yeah, I, think, me too. I think that the comment at the cabin makes sense of them saying, you know, I'm glad you came. But what was Toby's yes. response? He said something about her. What was his response? He said, I didn't think she, I didn't know if she'd want me here. Oh. But I don't know if he's talking about Kate, her, Rebecca, uh, her. We don't know. Yeah, because at the time I thought he was talking about Rebecca, but now mm-hmm. I'm thinking maybe he's talking about Kate. But Kate wouldn't want him there if Toby was the one who screwed things up. Kate wouldn't have a problem with it if she's the one who screwed things up. Unless it's just for the kids' sake of the fact that their grandma's dying and that, you know, their dad should be there. I mean, I could see Kate being mature enough to allow that to happen. Yeah, but I mean, I, I, she, I think she is going to be. But the fact that Toby says that means that either A, he's talking about Rebecca mm-hmm. or B, he's talking about Gates. And either way, that means that Toby did something that he doesn't think he's been forgiven for. Because if it was Kate who ended the marriage and did something to end the marriage, why would Toby say, yeah. I wouldn't think she'd want me there? Yeah, true. And mm-hmm. even with Rebecca, if Kate was the one who damaged the marriage and destroyed the marriage, why would Rebecca not want Toby there? Right. She would have no reason to want him not to be there. But if you notice, like, I mean, it doesn't seem, I mean, like Kevin seems like somebody that would hold a grudge if somebody hurt his sister and he doesn't seem to have an issue with Toby. Like he seemed welcome and open and maybe so Madison changed all that with him when he got married and, and fell in love with her. And, and mm-hmm. Randall was, you know, I mean, everybody's the one really welcoming. Yeah. I mean, yeah. death has a conversation. Everybody's really welcoming. So, but I mean, again, <sighs> they all spent a lot of time with Toby and Kate, like we have, and have grown to love Toby the way we have. How can you not? Yeah. But that know. comment again with that same with the brother-in-law comment. I don't see another way that that comment makes any sense. Um, but this show has a way of making things that you don't think make sense eventually make sense. So I'm just gonna I'm gonna hold the faith mm-hmm. here. And well, they better give us some answers in that series finale because <laughs> if they don't, I'm gonna. Someone was talking about a spinoff. Who is saying something about a spinoff? 
I've heard rumors like here and there, but nothing that I could like substantiate. You I, know, nothing substantial. No, Vian, Vian said it. Okay. I saw stuff floating around Facebook too about there being a possible spinoff, like with um, you know, the the new big three, and then also Jack. I was like, I don't know if this is us really lends itself to having a spinoff. I mean, you could continue the family line forever. Yeah. I mean, the new big three might be kind of fun to see like the kids or whatever. Especially since we've already got adult Jack and Haley, you know, cast. So yeah, Yeah. I want to see them again. I thought we'd get to see more of them. I'm assuming probably next season. I'm assuming they'll, well, I don't know. Maybe not though. I know that I saw, I follow, um, oh, what is her name now? I can't think about it. Adeline, Adeline Kane. Kane. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, Love and her. I saw like a, a live on TikTok that she was doing and she had mentioned, like someone had asked her like if she was ever coming back and she said she couldn't say, but that she's still, like they've still got her held in contract that if they need her, she's got to come. Because she was talking about her hair, like she couldn't change her hair because mm. she's still in contract if, if she needs to come back to the show. So that hopefully sounds next difficult, season. not being able to change her hair. <laughs> But I mean, yeah. I'd be called back for a job. If they, right. I think they're going to pull back everyone they gave us a future glimpse of in mm-hmm. the final season. So yeah. I don't know if that indicates a, a, a spinoff. I think that indicates that they, I mean, they've already brought it to the future. So they've got to bring all of that back to connect the past with the future that they've shown us. Yeah. Yeah. And if they don't, again, what was the freaking point? Right. <laughs> it just... Mm-hmm. And I wonder if COVID really just messed a whole bunch of stuff up this year because maybe we were supposed to see more than we did. Like I mean, with Dan I think... Fogelman's brain? I don't know. <laughs> that maybe. I think they were just really <sighs> limited on the number of people that could be hey, on set. Like, Toby and Kate time, were but... on set the whole time. <laughs> <laughs> I that know. British guy wasn't. He was an add-on. Okay. He's an interloper. <laughs> He can go back to a million little things and just leave us alone. He also appeared and broke up another relationship in Modern Family, also playing a British dude. Who did he break? I don't think I haven't finished that show. He is British, but still. Yeah, he needs to get out of here. No, I loved him on a million little things. Okay, he can come back to a million little things. That's what I'm saying. Go back there. I've heard he's great there. (laughs) Yeah, leave Kate and Toby alone. (laughs) I'm like, her being with him is him saying i mean what he said to her was couldn't stand you thought you didn't deserve it thought you were complete crap but you're great now like toby yeah. always knew she was great from the moment he met her yes. yeah yeah this guy undervalued her thought she was worthless thought she was crap made her feel like crap it was until, rude i mean yeah, absolutely until she rude. did something good and then mm-hmm. he saw anything something in her Toby didn't need to see her do good to know she had worth. Interloper. Yeah. Right. That's his, that's how he's billed on This Is Us. I looked it up. He doesn't have a name. He's called Interloper. I'm just kidding. For those of you watching, you think I'm being serious. <laughs> yeah, for a second, I was like, seriously? Is that a <laughs> I don't know his name, though. I don't know. It'd be great if IMDb was like Wikipedia and anyone could go in there and change stuff. <laughs> right. <laughs> oh all right so it it ends miserably but Mm hope see this is what makes me so mad about this is us is they can't let me feel one emotion at an ending of anything (laughs) because i love that nikki's married i have hope that kevin and madison are getting married or are at least got into harvard i mean there were lots of good things but they're all overshadowed by this one terrible thing like at first i was like oh great they're getting they're, they're renewing their vows right because That's they had I such thought. a hard time and they just had this really beautiful talk and they reaffirm their love for each other it's renewing their vows right right and then Kevin went out the door and it was like oh you son of a biscuit can we talk yeah. about how beautiful Kate looked though she I do want to throw that stunning. in there oh my oh, gosh yeah. she was so beautiful <laughs> just throw in one good thing there about the wedding yeah and Beth was there so I mean we know Randall and Beth are still together yeah but she did she did look really really pretty who we didn't see was rebecca no we did not we saw everybody else but rebecca and miguel wonder if rebecca's already she may be not able to come by that point i don't know so it's five years in the future but at the cabin she's bedridden yeah when they're all but who knows 
but who knows how long she's been like that too i mean it, it may have started around that time so you look distraught maureen i'm trying to do math <laughs> <laughs> that's why i look distraught <laughs> <laughs> math is not my strong suit i'm desperately mm -hmm. trying to figure out the ages of, of everything when they're when everything they've showed us i'm trying to figure out the ages and i just there's no discernible thing i can figure out i All wish the, I they mean, could like provide years along mm -hmm. like when yeah. they flash forward it's like okay now it's i feel like they're older than you know, whatever I feel like they're older than yeah. 50 randall and I kevin think, are super gray but i don't think they can be because if deja is in medical school she's probably 25 26 maybe 27 well, which on how long this... she is in medical school though but then the twins are only like 10 or 11 max so i think so it's this only would 10... be so this they're only 50 years. so yeah. this would be f maybe like five years how or, do they both get say. so gray they yeah, make it look so old based it's on true. the timeline we've been given they're probably 50 but then they're also gray so Maybe they're going to throw us know. another surprise that those are a second set of twins that Kevin has. Oof. Oh, God. Because, <laughs> but, then how do you, but then you can't explain. I mean, because Deja's not going to be like 30 something and just starting medical school. She's just but an does intern. Did she say right? she's just starting medical school? I think, I think so. she's an, I think she's an intern or something. Mm -hmm. So that's. Which I think would put her about 26 or so. Okay, if you go to school, you go four year university. So that mm -hmm. puts her at 22. Mm -hmm. And then if you do four years, I suppose, yeah, if she's just starting as an intern, she'd be, she would she'd be, be about 26, 26 28, depending yeah. on when she gets to college. So it's only, it's max 13. I mean, it's about 10 to 13 years in the future from present time. So, so they're early 50s. Maybe they Why just got really make, gray. So maybe they did not age well. that gray was super mis. What's the word I want to say? Misleading. Misleading. Is misconceiving a word? I can't like. Uh, I'm, my I brain is broken. So. I can't like. Think. I think so, but I don't think. But I think it's the, the, the word right word. looking for. Yeah, it's not the right is word. Is the word I'm thinking. Yes. But yeah, I th they. I think that was a cruel thing to do if it's only ten years in the future to make them that gray, because that's just spiteful to the audience. That's just your only intention then is trying to give them a bad impression of the timeline. Well, and it makes sense too because Rebecca with dementia like that, it's probably not going to last more than like 10 years. That was my so. confusion because I know that, well, it's Alzheimer's, isn't it? Alzheimer's and yeah, you know, she has. I don't, I'm, I'm ignorant on the difference really. So I just, but yes. But I mean, to go to see her there, I was like, well, Kevin and Randall are super great so they've got to be in their 60s but I didn't think Rebecca would last it long given her diagnosis and what's going mm -hmm. on so it was just making them maybe, that great was just mean to the audience maybe it's just the men because I will say that Beth doesn't look bad she looks no. about 50 yeah so so maybe it's just the men I mean getting old looking I don't know I mean not that they look bad because Kevin still looks amazing they both they all look great it's just the yeah. color of their hair yeah yeah all right. Well, Make I think happen. we did this as much as we can. I think that Madison and Kevin are going to eventually get married. If not, yes. well, they're not already married, but I think they're going to end up married. I think they are currently together five years in the future. I think that Kate is making the biggest mistake of her life. Absolutely. Toby already has by agreeing to a divorce or pulling mm -hmm. at me. Either way, he's made a terrible decision. And <laughs> I think Nikki, I mean, Nikki is thriving. Yeah, that was cute. Yeah, you don't good think for he him. married Rebecca, do you? You know, that oh. was a comment on um, somebody. What did they say? The reason why? Okay, it was on our Facebook page. I think he that was they the one said in the with the wedding ring on. Yeah, I think they said um, like, mm. "What if Miguel died?" And maybe something about like, but they said something about his like VA benefits. But he doesn't get VA. But does he get VA benefits? Yeah, mm -hmm. I guess he does. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And as a way to let her have the, I don't know. I mean, I, I think that's a stretch. I don't know No, because if he was, that he had to have been married five, less than five well, plus years the fact that I mean, she would already get something because Jack, I mean, she's a survivor. I mean, I don't know. How does that work with Jack would have had those benefits and then they would have, I don't know. I don't know enough about that to know how that works. Um, mm -hmm. But I, I think that's a stretch and that's, I don't and think so. To have men keep saving Rebecca in grief is, is, is a played out storyline. So I, I, I hope they don't do that. 
No. Now him sitting by the bed at the end could be like honoring Jack. Her, her, because she may think he's Jack, which that would make sense. Um mm-hmm. just in her state. Because I mean, and he maybe that's speak. why they, and you know, that could be another reason why Miguel isn't there. Because maybe yeah. in her her state that she doesn't remember the time with Miguel, she still thinks she's married to Jack. And so out of respect for her, maybe he stays away. But Jack is like also good friends with Miguel still when he died. Yeah, but maybe he it would be confusing friend. or I don't, I don't know. Maybe there's something to do with that that, you know. But there is know. something to the fact that Nikki doesn't speak. Because when, when Kevin comes in yeah. and looks at him, Nikki just kind of nods. He doesn't say anything. His voice yeah. is so different from Jack's too. So if she thinks he's Jack, that would check out that his, when he talks, she would get really confused. Yeah, that's true. I do think that may be why he's there at the end. <sighs> the show. I expected, <laughs> I expected more answers on the season finale yes, rather than this yeah. like, curveball. At least we did. I, I think they should have set us up better for what's, what the ending is. Mm-hmm. And I think they just gave us more questions. Yep agreed all right well the next season has i think i read they have 23 episodes next season is that right mm, hopefully because that's what a full season usually is so. i think they're billed for 23 so at least we should have more than <sighs> covid won't interrupt that we'll have better answers better and it's not supposed to be <laughs> until 2022 right shut up really then we don't have 23 episodes it'll just run january to may oh no Ugh! That's not long enough. <laughs> because here's the thing. Okay, if Kate really is marrying this other guy, which we think she is, that's the way they're... I mean, they really have... They're going to really have to work hard to get me on board. I'm going to need yeah. lots of episodes to get me on board with this. And I, yeah. don't, I don't know. Absolutely. It's gonna, they've got their work cut out for them to make them... To make me okay with her not being with Toby. I'm doing math. Hang on. <sighs> So it's only 19 to 20 that we even have Tuesdays of. 19 to 20 Tuesdays mm-hmm. is all we have and from January to May. And we know they take several breaks. Mm-hmm. Well, they did for COVID. I don't think they usually take that many breaks. I feel like they usually take quite a few breaks still. Well, that's because they usually go from September to May. So they take a break at Thanksgiving. They do a winter break and mm-hmm. then they do a spring break. So there's usually three breaks per, per series. Like all, most yeah. series take three to four breaks. Yeah. And that's because they run September to May. So they get their 22 to 23 episodes in while taking those hiatuses. I'm going to be really, mm-hmm. may, they have to extend it. Maybe they'll extend it to June and then take zero breaks and start filming in September. Right. We want every single Tuesday, please. <laughs> yes. <laughs> because we know Dan Fogelman is listening to this and he takes yes. our advice pretty strictly. Mm-hmm. Um, For sure. Hear that and do that, please. Thank you. Mm-hmm. If you can't do every Tuesday, then throw us a Wednesday or something. I don't care. Yeah. Just we'll watch it. Make it happen once a week. Every is week. all I need. Yeah, make yeah. it Thursday, Friday, and Saturday. I mean, we will watch three days of, of this we will. Month. Let's yeah. do it. I'll or watch it all week. <laughs> give us eight two-hour-long episodes. No, that would work too. Let's, let's do that. Yeah. So, um, work it out, Dan. <laughs> I'm making faces he like he it. can see what my face is doing, but he can't see what my face is doing. No, no. no. <laughs> so it's just for your entertainment benefit. <laughs> All right. I don't think um, I can talk about this anymore without wanting to punish things. So I'm not a violent person, audience, just so you know. I'm not actually, I don't really want to murder people. I don't really want to choke people out or punch people or whatever else I said in this. It's just my emotions running very high. <laughs> It's, it's put that I, on the record yes i just i wanted to be known to all of the internet that you don't have to send police to my house <laughs> also if i were a teacher i wouldn't actually get arrested i would just think of things that would get me arrested doesn't help anyway let's close this show out before i really get in trouble here um <laughs> So let us know what your thoughts are on the season finale. We want to know if you are enraged like we are, or if you don't really care or like the show at all and you have no feelings about it, um, then we want to encourage you to talk with us so we can convert you. Uh, let us know your thoughts. If you think that we're way out of line or if you think that uh, we're mad about stupid stuff, tell us. Let's have a discussion. Let's have a conversation. You can join us on our Facebook group at um, This Is Us Pearson Family Fan Club. Or you can send us an email at familyfanclub2021 at gmail.com. 
or you can reach out in the comment description of our of our podcast channel or on our youtube channel so we have many avenues for you to talk to us if you don't it's your own fault so on that note we will see you in a week where we are going to be discussing what do we discuss grace anatomy next week Grey's anatomy we are yeah. doing a season rundown after the season finale so tune in for that if you so, are a Grey's fan. And so you much see jeanette and eve in that discussing voraciously all things Grey's anatomy <laughs> bye guys see you in a week Bye.